I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I am great. How is your Saturday coming along? So far it's good, you know. I went to, I took a walk, you know, and just came to do this interview. How, how is there? Um, well, relaxing and, uh, you know, I, I'm very excited that we can have this conversation following Linda's referral. So yeah, yeah, I'm excited too. Yeah, Linda uh, told me to say uh, hi to you. You know. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, She's a very interesting woman. I respect her a lot. Yeah, yeah. We are basically every day on the line. So. Ah, uh, nice. So, um, this interview is also in collaboration with a school I work with. It's called Nairobi School of Forex, and so yeah. Um delighted to be doing this. So I'm going to do your bio first and then we can dive right in. Okay. Okay. Peter was born on July 8th, 1989 in Jag Jagodina, Serbia. He graduated from ICT College of Applied Studies with the graduate thesis on financial markets, after which he began working as a currency analyst for Insta Forex company a large private investors and hedge fund. Most recently, Peter is trading with a group of institutional traders and he became part of iMarket's live TV educational section. Peter has been involved in the world of finance since 2007. In his trading career, he specializes in price action, market profile and volume analysis. Peter is primarily day trader, swing trader. Moreover, Peter is trading is a trading teacher and has a vast experience in tutoring and conducting webinars and seminars. So Peter, I think we're in the same space and uh, your bio primarily, you know, the education, you're big on that as well, so which is good. So maybe you can tell us first of all, how you landed into trading currencies. Um, that is actually a fi uh, funny story because um, I was like 17 years old and um, I um, applied for a totally different job, not related to the trading. And, you know, when I um, I called the boss for that company and, uh, it, you know, I was like, I was thinking that I'm applying for a totally different uh, job and it was like, no, 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 it's not that job that you wanted, that we have something different. It's called, you know, Forex, you know, and... Uh, you know, can you check more about that? We need some someone to trade, and uh, you know, someone who can um, learn more in tr uh, more about trading and maybe work for us in the future. And I was like, yeah, why not? You know. Um, so I started. I was 17 years old, and I started um, to Google and to do research about what trading is. You know, what a forex is. That was my. These, uh, these basically were my first uh, steps. And after that, I basically very fast uh, fall in love with this um, business, let's say. And I really enjoyed to order the charts. Uh, you know, I didn't even have, have the, um, have the, you know, I, I, I could go for 10 hours, you know, and just watch charts and I don't even know the time, what the time is, you know. So it was really, you know, time flies like, you know, very fast when I, when I when I when I when I did try it, you know, so I I started on that way. Um, it was I think very funny funny story, and uh, I'm doing it right now 13 years uh, full time since then, you know. So I think it's kind of funny a funny story. Mm. So like, did you have like the guy who was interviewing you? Did you have like sort of? So did he guide you into it or you just had to study like self-taught? No, it was just like, hey, you're young, you know, can you check what a, we need some, you know, we are like broker house, like new broker house here in, uh, in, um, in Serbia, you know, and then I was like, yeah, why not? You know, I'm, I was very young and, you know, I wanted to try something new and, uh, you know, and I really, really enjoyed, you know, and then I started very hard. Uh, to investigate more about, you know, I went through a different websites. Forex Factory is one of the uh, first websites um, based on the Forex that where I met uh, different uh, traders and other um, other guys who at that time they traded basically more than 10 years and so on. So I started to 
um, c communicate uh, with them and you know um, that is that these were my first steps basically um, on, on trading okay and uh, so on your bio you specialize on um, you're a you're a technical analyst sort of trader and but you do volume analysis and market profile. Can you just explain a little bit what those two entail? Yes. So basically, yes, I'm a technical analyst. I do not uh, try even to understand fundamentals. I think I tried like years ago and I didn't find any, any value that I can use like for my day trading or, you know, uh, because you can interpret the different on different ways, uh, different uh, economic stuff. So I, I really, really believe strictly in the technical analysis and I'm um, full into that. Now you have a different um, uh, types of technical analysis. I mean, you can, um, for example, you, you can use oscillators like momentum stuffs. So you can use price section, a regular, you know, swing high, swing lows. Um, you can use, I basically started to use the profile like um, eight years ago. And uh, profile is a kind of different way than usual. Uh, that you will see that you have a candle charts or bar charts. Um, on, on the, using the market profile, you can basically watch how the market is um, the function of like auction process, where you can find where the value is for the day, which is basically where the 68% of trading acti activity happened. You can find where the point of control is or what is the most fairest price during the day or during the week if you watch the market profile. And... Um, it's kind of different perspective from something which most of the traders uh, um, are using. And I think it's a very valuable that you, you can use in combination with the regular trading, um, with the regular pro candle charts, you know, you can use the profile to have more uh, information and more data that you can uh, then uh, put into your analysis in your final, I hope to say that, how final tough on the, on, on the currency pair that you observe. Volume is a different story, you know, volume is, um, I basically learn a lot uh, on the volume from um, uh, Vykov, uh, Richard Vykov, um, he was stock operator back in years and years ago, um, and um, he basically did a phenomenal job on the, on, on the volume aspect related to the price, and I think that um, if someone is interested in the in the volume, uh, I advise pretty much to read about the, the everything from Vykov's work, you know, because he did a phenomenal job. Okay, and so with that, like, can you, uh, is your trading uh, automated or is it, are you on a manual system of trading? Uh, basically, I'm full uh, manual, uh, manual trading. Uh -huh. um, I do believe that you can automate some parts of trading. I do also believe that eventually there is something that we can call the ultimate code because there is a final number of, um, how to say that, um, options, but there is a final, but it's a so complex that I don't think that anyone can actually break the, the full code, but there, I, I think there, there is the actual code, but it's just way too complex for um, anyone. You can take some parts of, uh, of that code and implement, but to have all around, because um, no matter what market you trade, it's pretty much a lot of variables, right? So it's very hard to, to let's say, find something that uh, people are trying to, to find, you know, which is what they call the holy grail or something. So the holy grail, actually, I do think it's, it, it exists, right? But it's so it's so complex that I don't think that anyone could even go and um, let's say crack it or something, right? So manual trading is basically for me um, uh, everything because I like to see um, my perception from my experience. Um, people are very good in recognizing the patterns um, and then adapting to the conditions. People can change uh, and people can um, how to say that. Um, can change much faster than any automated system and adapt to the current market condition. <clears throat> Pardon. So, you know, for example, today's um, low liquidity, uh, you will apply different style. Maybe you will not even take any trade or something. Then uh, tomorrow can be a higher volatility than tomorrow can, 
can uh, be a much better volatility for you to try to catch something so people can much better uh, apply to the current market condition and do the change, right? While the uh, robots and automated systems will only work um, by the code, you know, so it's a very hard for them to, you know, um, to adapt. It's, they, I will say, a lot slower you can adapt the robot to the changeable condition that you can do by yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And like, um, maybe let's go back a little bit. Like, what's your trading process like? Like when you wake up and do you have like a general market overview of like before you place your trades? Like, how do you, um, you know, do that? Yes. Uh, so um, I strictly believe that that preparation is half of the job, in my opinion. So um, the preparation in in sense of um, um, trying to, let's say, um, what my routine is basically after the end of the trading day, I will see how the daily candle will close. I will see the how we end finish the day. I will check my. Uh, how the where we are on the daily time frame uh, check do we trade in the trading ranges maybe or we have some trend environment on some currencies or some different markets um, then I can uh, put that in my note for example I will write uh, let's say just uh, for example purpose you can put euro dollar is basically I don't know in a trading range but I don't know for example yen is in in some trend mode yen got extended run so you just write these notes uh, how you you go currency pair by currency pair or market by market and you mark these nodes that you found uh, by watching these charts and then you that tomorrow when you wake up you are already prepared because you did your homework the, the day before and you um, then you just need um, when you wake up I do check what the overnight session here in Europe we uh, we watch what the Asia session did okay and then you see if we have any, if we had any trend over overnight, or uh, we traded in the training training range overnight. So then I check what news we got today. If we have any news, what time will be uh, for these news? You know, and um, I start to work on the on the present, right? What's going right now, and um, see if uh, there is anything interesting from the structure that I, I can see that is tradable the whole point in my trading is to try to catch the trend day um, try to catch the let's say some bigger part of the average daily range so for example from time to time and you can find it for example when i wake up early morning your obsession that um, some of the currencies already did a lot of the trend during the overnight session so it's a tricky to when something is overbought or oversold when you start to when you open your charts to try to catch some part of the trend when the trend already almost finished it you know so you can try to scalp a bit there or here or there but i don't think so that will make you rich uh, in terms of um you know scalp five ten pips or something if you want to do that but the whole point is and from my perspective is to try to catch the trend day right and try to catch that as early as i can um so and then I see when I uh, when I start and open the open charts, I see where we have possibility that we have trend day during my session, during Europe US session, let's say, um, on my time here, right? So I watch different markets. Uh, I'm basically came for the currency um, market, and I work for the fund uh, with, for strictly currency pairs and actually gold and uh, crude oil. But again, I'm basically most recently, basically I'm on all, all uh, let's say, volatile and all liquid, let's say, better all liquid markets. So I'm trading also the futures, uh, grains, um, metals, you know, whatever, wherever, whatever uh, is interesting to me, I will try to anticipate potential more, right? All right. And so with that, like, how do you deal with um, overnight risks when you're swinging? Because you're uh, also a swing trader. Yes, overnight, uh, first, first of all, a swing, I basically, even if I do swing trade, I, uh, my main is the day trading. I'm main day, tra uh, day trader. And okay. uh, from time to time, 
uh, I can um, extend for a day or two, but there must be condition for that. For example, I'll give you one example. We let's say that we were trading in the trading range, let's say in the euro dollar, just example. And um, I did catch that breakout on the intraday on, on that day of the breakout. So I can extend another day, extra day by holding position if I secure that position on the break even or um, I need to secure that position. Uh, and then if I got a possibility to secure the position, I can extend one extra day, maybe even two extra days uh, in order to catch that potential uh, more direction of that breakout. But these are just conditions uh, some conditions that are not that often. Okay, so most of the time I'm doing the day trades and um, holding for a maximum at the end of the day. Just in specific conditions, I will again let the position, but uh, I need to secure it on the break even at least. Firstly, right? So that sounds that is good. Right. Yeah. And so, like your risk management uh, process, what does that entail for you? Um, and also, I've heard you're not just strictly trading currencies, you're also doing commodities, yes. yeah? Yes, uh, in terms of the risk, I, I, I read a lot of the internet, a lot of questions I'm getting also um, from uh, from traders and they ask you what is the, uh, what is the best, best strategy that you can uh, find for the risk perp, uh, for the risk side, you know? Um, is there any um, formula that is um, the ultimate formula for the risk? And I would say it's absolutely individual. Okay, I can say you to work in the. Okay, let, let's say on this way, I work with a phone for a two years uh, for a large catch phone, but we got the rules there. Okay, so for example, um, we got a limitation of 1.5 uh, daily max risk, so you cannot you could not lose more than 1.5 percent um, in a day. Or we got, for example, a restriction of 5 percent per week or 10 percent per month. So why they got that? Basically, they got that to keep their traders uh, of going crazy, let's say, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So that you cannot go and lose like 10 percent in a single day. That would be a disaster. I mean, you will just lose the yeah. Job instantly there, you know, there is no exception there. So in that terms, um, I always advise, um, uh, especially new traders, but I also any trader, I can advise to set some kind of limits. Um, you can set daily limits, um, weekly limits or, or monthly limits, just to keep you of not going crazy, not extending the risk side. The one thing is also that we got possibility to, for example, um, we got some flexibility within these boundaries of the risk. Uh, what we got is basically that you can extend risk from time to time if you really uh, see something interesting by your trading methodology. You can extend that 1.5% risk per day, but you cannot afford to extend more than the weekly risk. So you cannot, let's say, you can extend maybe one extra percent for that day, but then you will have a less percent to lose end of the week something like that you could do okay mm -hmm. from time to time that, that, that there was that flexibility to not keep you away from if there is something interesting let's say let's say like this for example you got an entry um you got two losses in a row for that day you let's say you reached your daily max risk but you can do for example if you see the third entry uh again you think it's a good you can try that entry and um, like, but just within these boundaries of this weekly max risk. Okay, so we got this kind of flexibility involved. But this is my advice for everyone because risk is the major thing. We are money managers, basically. We cannot predict in that manner that you can say this will go here exactly at this time or there exactly at this time. We can only manage the risk, try to do our best to find a uh, good spot to enter position with a relative tight risk and to then to watch and manage the position. That's our job. Cool, cool. And when you're teaching your students, because uh, you normally have the webinars and the seminars, yes. uh, what do you, uh, when you're evaluating good trades and what, when, you, when you're imparting knowledge to them, is it by the ability to manage the drawdowns or how do you, you know? That's a very good question, uh, actually. Um, 
because to be honest, uh, let's say I work with the, with the fund, I work with the 10 uh, also, 10 um, fund managers. So we were like mm -hmm. 10, um, 10 managers within that fund. Uh, the thing is, the more, cons the more consistency you have, the larger the pot that the fund will give you to manage. Why right? that's normal, okay, because they always will watch the results in the first place. The, uh, the thing about um, the, 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 the pot size, you know, that you will have, you must deal with the risk first because they will, uh, the best traders, and um, I even have, uh, I have a lot of friends in, um, uh, in, the, in the, institution, the institutional side um, and uh, the best traders are basically the, the traders who can, uh, let's say, relatively easily with the quotes relatively easily uh, can overcome the drawdown. So it's the best trader is not the trader who will make you a most profit necessarily, right? Yeah. The, the best trader is basically the trader who have the most consistency, provides you still the profit. It's, it, 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 you, it, you don't need, a, I don't know, 20% a month or 10% a month or stuff like that. You can have a free 4%, 2% month per month, but you must provide a consistency in terms of the profit, in terms of the risk. So consistency that you don't go and overextend your risk. And uh, the next thing is when you have the drawdown, because you will have drawdown, it's impossible to have no drawdowns, you have 100% win ratio, then you will basically, your ability to um, back on the track, uh, back to from that the drawdown, whatever is free 5% or 6%, to back on the level and then uh, go and continue again. These are the traders who got the best ability to do this are actually the best traders, in my opinion. And I um, I work with the fund and I also, uh, again, I'm in touch and in contact with uh, a lot of institutional traders. So I will say like ability to back uh, and uh, doing your work exactly like you did even before that drawdown, it's actually what will make the difference. Mm. And when it comes to drawdowns and especially with manual traders, you know, because our trading is more discretionary, how do you, when, when, when you get a high drawdown level, how do you deal with your emotions so that it does not affect your second trade or your next trade, you know? Yeah, that, that, that's also a good, good question because emotions are very, very uh, important part. If you cannot control emotions, uh, then you are not quite ready to actually do anything. Um, you must work on that side for, on your person, right? Because uh, let's say when you are in drawdown, the best thing you can do is to refresh your head, continue to do every day what you do and you know what you do that. Uh, on the way you can try to improve by even 0.1% every single day and no matter what aspect of trading, eventually on the long term, uh, this 0.1% marginal change on the better on the mother it's psychological psychological part or it's um, some trading skill part but try just to point one percent uh, improve yourself each day on the long run that will be a big improvement and the, the best thing when you're in the drawdown is basically just to keep calm uh, work on your homework every single day that like you don't have a drawdown so forget about that um, negative stuff that you are seeing something is uh, red, right? So just focus on the next trade on the next day and that will lead you to back into the stability, okay? Eventually, if you have a very a big drawdown or something, um, I will say if you got something like 15, 20% drawdown, uh, then something is not quite good. You need to um, recap what you're doing, maybe change something because these kind of drawdowns are pretty much big sign that something that you do is probably not that right. It can mm. be within the system. It can be within your uh, with, within within you. Uh, like something maybe uh, I don't know. Emotionally, you are still not ready. You need to grow emotionally in in, in that sense uh, for the trading. Uh, to don't panic when you're in the red. To also don't be so satisfied when you are in the profit. Believe me, you know you can easily go into the trap in the, the, on, on, the, on the on the on the on the on the other way like. Uh, if you're in the good profit, let's say you enjoy that profit, you feel 
satisfied that you are in the profit and everything is good, right? And yeah. then um, you you are blinded that you maybe cannot watch and close the position. You think it will go more and more and more naturally. And actually, that when you think that, I think it's usually the best way to exit. You know, so uh, I will say that both sides are pretty much uh, can have this. Um, uh, bad stuff. You know, if you're in a negative period, you will feel very bad. You will feel like, uh, let's say, you're 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 a loser, and that you are, you know, you you will try to overcome that drawdown always very fast. You know, as fast you can, and naturally that can potentially lead you if you're not very skilled. Uh, that can lead you to go into more into more disaster. You know, and eventually you can blow your account. From the other side, if you're in a huge plus or something, uh, you will feel very satisfied, and that can also trick you because you will not maybe close your position when you need because you will still want more. And the second thing, uh, maybe also that can lead you to, let's say, <laughs> it happened, I think, to everyone, you know, um, since you don't have that experience. Let's say the early, uh, my early trading days, I was like, oh my God, I got this profit, you know, it's going 100 pips, 150 pips. Oh my God, this can go 200 pips. I see the next level is here. I see the next level is here. It can go 300 pips. And then, uh, basically, uh, what, what can happen is just price can correct. You can lose most of your profit uh, and you, you know, you, you were, you were, you was totally blinded. Right. And also the next thing, which I will say it's a wrong by being that satisfied with your profit is the next trade. You can easily go and risk more just because you got that good feeling from previous trade. And that yeah. is a big trap. So I think that you need to be very emotionally let's say emotionally stable in terms that I honestly, that's, that will come by, from experience, right? You cannot, um, you must understand that by experience, right? So, um, uh, I, for example, now, if I compare myself now and like, um, like 10 years ago, it's totally, totally different story. You know, it's I'm, I'm almost totally opposite, you know, uh, back then 10 years ago or 20, 12 years ago, I was like, so emotional in my, no matter if it's a um, negative trade or positive, emotions were, were very, very, uh, very high. Uh, then um, systematically, I did totally wrong there. I didn't have actually a systematic uh, thing to do. I was just like trying to find some systems over the internet, try to test them like millions of them. I don't even know the number, but you know, and eventually you go, go more, test, go here, lose there. And then you find your way, you find who is, you know, go, get in touch with a, someone who got a success, try to learn, try to learn from your own experience. And then it's a, absolutely the process to become a good trader. I don't say you will need to go for, go hundred systems, but try to find something which seems uh, worth to try uh, from the persons who got, um, who got already results, proven results, and then try to see if some if there is something that you can use from them. Yeah, Thanks. and because you've been in this game for more than ten years, of course, for people to trust you with institutional money, you must have, you know, proved yourself with your numbers. So, like, how do you make sure that you you're constantly improving your trading and evaluating your performance? Like, how do you statistically track that and, and make sure that you're improving your, your trading? Um, the best way that I, uh, I found is basically to do, or you can do maybe a quarterly, maybe yearly, but you can do quarterly mm -hmm. um, statistic from your own trading. I think it's a three months, a pretty good period to do your recap of what you did. Okay. So no matter what system you trade, give it like three to five months. Uh, but be dedicated with that um, and with whatever you're trying to test or something, give it like three to six months and then uh, see what the statistic will tell you, you know, how much you got, uh, how many, uh, the frequency of tra trades per day, uh, the win ratio, you know, the average risk reward that you got in position and see if there is something that you, co you can work on and maybe improve on and see if there is something that you can really uh, let's say trust and that you have that you actually uh, have um, uh, how to say that 
uh, that you have confidence when you try it. Because your confidence will actually grow when you understand the system well and when you believe in that, uh, what you're doing. And you must be absolutely understand what you're doing and why you're doing. Most recently, you know, um, I'm in group with institutional traders and, you know, I, one good thing you can do always, anytime you trade, you just ask why I did this trade. Explain to yourself why I did this trade. But try to be honest, okay? Don't try to go like, I did because, I don't know, you jump on the monthly and because I see this or because I see that. Try to be completely honest with you and say the reasons why you did that. And maybe on that way you can also find the answer um, on some bad trades, that you, how you can maybe avoid these trades and something like that, right? Okay. And would you say, okay, we're almost winding up. Do you have like a trading philosophy that you stand by or, you know, you just do whatever you do every single day? Yeah. Um, trading philosophy is work hard, um, be dedicated. And um, the, there are a few things that I want also to tell to basically audience and that, um, that in my opinion, they, they, they can use on their own. So first of all, uh, if you're in the Forex business or any kind of this investment, no matter what market you plan to trade, if your only, only, only purpose is to make money, I don't think so that you're in the right place. Simply because you need to have passion, you need to love this business so much that you can spend even 10 hours, 12 hours per day uh, with no problem, um, with no complaining, you know, and um, that dedication and that trying to improve every single day, working on these details will lead you to consistent results uh, on the long run. If your only goal is to make money, just like make, make money, and you don't enjoy the process of doing it, don't enjoy and don't have a passion to this, I think you can have a big troubles being um, and make anything big on the market. That's a one thing. The second thing, basically, what I will also say is uh, market is very complex. Uh, uh, a lot of things are basically um, involved in the when the price is changing, right? A lot of things. Uh, and um, I actually got one conversation um, with institutional uh, traders as well about, uh, for example, let's say that you enter the position, right? And you mm -hmm. put a stop, let's say, uh, just for example purpose, you put a stop at 10 pips. That that trade didn't work. Let's say you, you took a stop of 10 pips. You got a 10 pips loss. Okay. So mm -hmm. now I can ask, is that wrong? So did you make a mistake or you did the right thing? Why I'm asking you that? Because actually by taking the stop of 10 pips, uh, if you did everything like uh, you doing in your system and you did everything systematically that you do every day, taking the stop of 10 pips was the right thing. You cut your stop, you took the 10 pip stop, but the outcome was negative. And now there is a thing because the people will think when something went uh, in the, let's say in the minus, right? And you got minus on your account of 10 pips or, or something, right? Or no matter, it can be 20 pips or 30 pips. People will think that they make they made mistake, and that's not that quite right, because you tried that systematically trade that trade didn't work. You did the right thing because you did cut the stop, let's say on that way, and uh, you go for the next opportunity, uh, and uh, next opportunity will eventually turn into a good profit. So you know uh, the result is negative on your account, but it doesn't mean that you did any mistake actually. It could be that you just did the right thing, okay? So that's in the trading is that a little more complicated, right? That you can, uh, that you can say for, uh, let's say, other business, right? Some other businesses. Here, the um, taking the loss, if something did, don't work, is actually uh, very, you did a very good thing, okay? Even the outcome was negative at that, that trade. You did a good thing because th this is what this business is about. You need to cut the loss. You need to try to catch a good trend day uh, and uh, always keep uh, your uh, equity in control in terms of the risk. 
So that is the one thing that I just want to, I want to share with you, which is, in my opinion, very, very important. So my philosophy, let's say, is basically work hard, um, try to improve every day, even by 0.1%. Eventually, in the long run, this will lead you to the much, much uh, bigger progress. I can just tell you a simple story from uh, Novak Djokovic, is our uh, mm -hmm. tennis player from Serbia, and he's first on the ATP rank list. Um, for example, at the beginning of his career, right, he got mm -hmm. about, I don't know, something like 47, 46 percent uh, uh, um, points won, right, during the match. And he, he, uh, he was earning at that time, I don't know, maybe $100,000 per year or something. And like 10 years after that, he improved from 46 to 52 percent or 53 points won. And uh, that change of a few percent basically made a tremendous change in his career in terms of the ADP rank. He's right now first and back 10 years ago was, I don't know, 100 something. And uh, right now he's earning, I don't know how many millions, you know, uh, per year. And uh, back then he earned like 100K. So the improvement on the few percent on the long run made a big change, right? So work on that, work on yourself. That is my philosophy and never think that you know everything. Uh, I will tell you, I, I, I think that's actually for every business. You always try to improve. There is always things that you can improve even by 0.1%. Uh, and you never don't stop learning and um, don't stop to enjoy. Right. And as long as you enjoy this business and the process of doing it, um, then you can do it good. When you lose your passion, when you lose everything, then it can be uh, it's it's not going to work, in my opinion. So I if honestly, I enjoy the process much more than actual trade, even if I'm, if I have the plus of, I don't know, like a hundred pips or something, right? It's really, my satisfaction is more in the process, right? I like like to solve these pieces of the puzzle, uh, you know, and I know that um, the, the trade is actually just result of the whole process that I did, yeah. you know, yeah. so that's my point. So in short, people should respect the process and the work that goes into the trading. Yeah. Absolutely. So respect the process. If you are here only to make money, I mean, in, if you're in the trading industry only to make money and that's only your purpose and you don't enjoy this and don't have a passion, I don't think so that you can make it. Uh, maybe someone can make, but honestly, on the most percent, like 98%, I think that you will not make. Because I can sit, for example, 12 hours in front of chart and I did that and doing that for 13 years in a row and I pretty much feel satisfied every single day uh, by That's doing the good. process. That is the difference. Um, if you, for example, have the traders who just wants to make money and prefer to make money, uh, imagine that Joe will start to play tennis and say, hey, mom, I will go to play tennis because I can be very rich. I mean, you can be rich on a, a lot of businesses, you know, <laughs> around. So it's, it's just to choose what is where your real passion is and what do you really enjoy that. Okay, and okay. then you can make it. Okay, so like, where can people go to find your work, or uh, if you if you ever put your work online, do you have a reference? Yes, to that? I mean they can check, they can write my full name and YouTube. I have channel, um, I have my website, uh, prosperiumfx.com. Um, they can check about my work. I'm doing education uh, every three months. I'm doing intensive program. I'm doing a lot of, of work on the profile, the market profile. Um, so they can write my full name. They can go to www.prosperiumfx.com and they can find out there. Um, I'm doing the daily analysis. They can find my educational work on the profile. And um, if there is a, someone who wants to read something, for example, uh, my advice is you can start with on the profile side, you can read, for example, State Meyer on the Markets. That is the book that is um, the, my beginning of the profile, actually, like years ago. You can read the Market Wizards, uh, market New Market Wizards as well, just to see the experience from uh, other institutional traders as well. And that can be a good starting point, uh, I think, for everyone. Yeah. In addition to, you said Richard Wyckoff. 
Adios. Yes, 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 yes. Richard Wyckoff, I, uh, any book from Richard Wyckoff, uh, his work uh, is tremendous and uh, even it's still valid because it's basically based on the supply and demand law and the cause and effect. So these laws will always exist uh, because overall the people opinions and the people reactions and emotions will bring you the moments, the market and oscillations and volatility. So emotions will not change overall, uh, people emotions and we cannot change like a race, you know. So yeah. there will be always, be always be emotional reactions, there will always be the news, like new syndrome when you have some news, you know, I don't know, it can be um, unemployment change or whatever, it can be FMC meeting minute. Then a lot of people will watch and uh, be there to press and button and try to earn very fast, you know. But if you ask me, you know, and the best, what is the best trade, mm -hmm. let's say, or something, I will say the, the best trade is the most efficient trade. Now, how I watch efficiency, I watch efficiency by uh, how much time I needed for what amount of profit. Okay, so let you can just compare. Um, if you did a trade and trade, uh, you got a four pips in a four hours. And um, let's say that's not that efficient, right? Uh, waiting four hours for four pips. But if you compare that, for, uh, for example, taking uh, in a two hours, uh, 30 pips, this is, this is much more efficient, okay? In terms of the time and related time versus profit. Okay, so I will say the most efficient trades are the best trades. Of course, your time will, your timing of entry will, um, must be perfect if you want, um, let's say the 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 best the most efficient most efficient trades but it's not of course there is no perfection but you will always try to do as perfect you can in terms of timing your entry all right so thank you for your wisdom i would say <laughs> and uh, you, you you will text me the name of your website i'm gonna link it on the show notes and then we would love to have you in the future Thank you as well. I really enjoyed and um, I'm sure that uh, you will do also good in the future and um, we'll speak um, in the next period. I hope so. So thank you as well. Okay. Cheers. Bye. Bye.